fourth episode already. Time's flying by. We left it, Jim and Tim were just about to start looking for bars. Jim had already got the girls out looking, she's found four bars. They wander around these four bars and they find one in Soyez, very close to a bar called the Sailor Bar, which I believe is still there today. A couple of doors down towards the beach, there's a row of, there was a, there was a row of about 10 bars, up a couple of steps, all open bars that had um, individual little cage shutters that came down. And this one bar, owned by a foreigner, Thai girlfriend, they'd broken up, he'd had enough, he'd lost money uh, for whatever reason, and wanted out quick. He was only three months into, maybe his second year, they got a great deal. Tim transferred money from the States. The equivalent of about $10,000 paid to get this bar with all the stock, with a TV and everything in place just to open on day one. Absolute bargain. However, because of where it was and the landlord, talking gin, sorting it out with the landlord, they would only give them one year, the rest of this year, nine months, and the next year as a lease. Okay, it's not the end of the world. 20,000 baht a month rent, that was steep, but it was in Soy 8, which at the time was the busiest soy, apart from Walking Street, in Patea. The bar was currently open and running, and there was a couple of girls there. There was a cashier there, but the cashier was the guy's, the guy's girlfriend, so they did a deal. Jin and Tim said they would come and work with him in the bar for a week to see if there was any problems um, before paying and signing all the paperwork. They wanted a week in the bar, which was very, very astute, very good idea. The guy agreed. Uh, the guy said he wouldn't be there, but the cashier girlfriend would be, and they'd get a feel of soy eight. Work permits in those days, they were available. As the foreigner, the way around it was to sit outside the bar, not go inside the bar, never to go behind the bar and serve drinks, etc but just be a host. And it was the normal, it was the done thing. So, Tim, again, it was just visa after visa it was going to be. And back in those days, you even just gave your passport to a tourist, a little visa company, and they'd take the passport out and get it stamped, so it was very easy. They, they went in, they spent a week there, but they were picking their times. They were just going in the evening for a few hours and they didn't give it, you know, 60 hours a week, 80 hours a week in there. They were just picking the times. Jin did that on purpose. She knew the bar would be okay and could make money, but she didn't want Tim to pull out before they got it. They were using his money. She never even offered her money. In fact, I don't think they ever had that conversation. Tim just did it. Okay, maybe rash. They spent the week, the week flew by. They did the deal, they agreed, they took the bar on. They changed the name of the bar and they wanted to change a bit of the, the decor. But with those bars there, they were all fluorescent lights, brides, and a lot of noise, girls jumping up and down the steps into the road trying to grab customers into those sections of bars. And it was different from the other three bars they'd seen, but it was the one that was probably going to make money. Tim didn't really understand. All he could work out was there was lots of people in the soy and it was in the middle. So it would get its fair share of money. And it did, it did. They, they opened up, uh, they let the girls go that were there. They didn't have any girls at first. Jin became the cashier. She also got a friend of hers to work as cashier at number two so that she could get some time away. 
Tim spent the evenings um, sat at the bar, not drinking much, and in the daytime he would actually just relax and wander around in the afternoon and enjoy life. So he had the best of both worlds. His, his new girlfriend would run the bar, he could wander around daytime, he wasn't at the bar for more than maybe five or six hours in the evening, all looked good, as with all the bars. And they got it at just the right time, high season starting. They were making money straight away. They only spent maybe a thousand dollars on bits and pieces for the bar. At the TV, had everything. It was just great. Jim got a couple of girls um, to work in the bar. All the bars next door had lots of girls. And Jim was watching them, putting customers in, weighing up the salaries of those girls to the amount of customers they were bringing in. She, she'd already failed in one bar, so she knew if she got loads of girls on salary, she would lose money. So she got a couple of freelancers, and a couple more came, and customers came. They were playing lower volume music, um, and Tim was quite fond of country and western, so I opted in for that style, but in Soy 8, this road in Matea at night, back in 2000, 2001, there were, I believe you could say there was 50 bars up to 100 bars crammed together, all playing loud music of different genres, and you couldn't hear yourself think. Whichever bar you sat in, you could hear the music from the other bars. So there was no getting away from it. It was open bars, live music. What attracted the guys to Soye was the buzz of walking up and down and so much attention from all the girls in the different bars. Um, and it was quite often the starting point for a lot of guys on a bit of a pub crawl. They do Soy 7, Soy 8, head off to Walking Street. The guys that were living there quite often stayed in Soy 7 and Soy 8 in the evenings. They didn't have all the bars up at Soy Bacow, Soy Linky, Soy Diane, all the rest. There was only a few back then. Um, so this was the, the, the main sort of buzzy area of beer bars in Pateo. They were making money. High season. Four months going on, four months, five months. The books, everything. They were paying the rent. They were giving some money for lady drinks to the freelancers, bar fines. They were turning over a lot of alcohol and making making money. The amount, I'm not sure, but they were making enough that Tim sharing with Jin could actually put some money in his pocket as spending and to pay for his hotel, which he was still staying at the same hotel, uh, and also be able to put some back in the bank. So at this point, everything was merry. It was working out. Tim was starting to live the dream in Thailand. He'd got a lovely girlfriend. They'd acquired a bar, and they were doing what so many do. As high season started to draw to a close, this is where I popped up. I has, was uh, in a bar, Soy BJ, and then I'd moved to Soy 7 bar, just around the back of this bar. And by chance, maybe late after work, or I'd been out looking, playing snooker, I dropped into their bar. And that's where I met Tim. And we got on quite well. Um, he didn't drink a lot. He was very easy going to talk to. We both have the love and passion of bikes. And we got on quite well. And over the next month or so, he actually popped round to our, my bar. And we became quite reasonable friends. And we started taking some of our customers to each other's bars as well as other bars friends. So I got to know him then. 
two, three months in, high season come to an end, the numbers drop off. Suddenly, as if the floodgate had been closed, the customers disappeared, and it was more so back in the early 2000, 2001. There was a, a big difference between low season and high season. Most bars were lucky to break even as you went into low season, and more so in open bars. Their bar just about probably made a slight loss for a few weeks, and this concerned Tim because he hadn't he'd gone from putting money away, paying his hotel. A bit of advice. I gave him and someone else gave him was to come out of his hotel which was costing him a lot of money uh, and get a room or an apartment. Jin found up near third road, um, second road to third road, I believe it was the Nire apartments, um, Narai 2 and 1, big block of apartments, they were Back then, 3,000 baht, 3,500 baht a month. Nothing special, small rooms, but it was like a bit of a village feel there. There was a pool outside. And they took one of those rooms. They were a bit dark and damp, those rooms. I spent a few nights there in my time. Yeah, quite depressing. But it was cheap. And they did. They moved into one of these rooms. The other thing was the motorcycle rent that Tim was paying. He decided it was made more sense to buy a motorcycle. And he loved motorcycles like I did. He bought a brand new Honda scooter. Um, it was a Honda Wave, I think. And in between sleeping in his room and working in the bar, he went off on a mad crusade with this Honda and customized it with colored nuts and bolts and chain guards and even got a guy to do a spray job on it custom like he used to do that he designed and he, had, he customized this Honda Wave and he spent about two I mean to buy it, it was about a thousand dollars and he spent a further maybe two thousand dollars on this bike to make it noisy and look good. It was ridiculous. It was just mad. But it was a talking point. You knew that Tim was in the bar if his bike was parked down the bottom of the road. Didn't park it right outside the bar, there was no room. And around the back there was no room. But it, just as you came into Soy 8, there was a room for about 40 bikes. It was always parked there. So if his bike was there, you knew he was there. In fact, he was there every night. But he was never there in the daytime. He started getting into a pattern at three in the morning food, home, sleep, and not coming back till, well, surfacing at four or five in the afternoon, and then going for food with his missus, not getting to the bar till about eight o'clock. Bad, bad habit to get into. And he'd have a bit of a ride on his bike around and around Patea, loving the noisy exhaust. But he was forever spending money on that bike. Uh, low season hit the midpoint they were losing money they started losing money our bar was just breaking even but it was tough and i noticed a difference in tim the fact that they were losing money and he was getting into this pattern of sleeping a lot he was eating more and he started drinking more but he wasn't drinking beer he was drinking whiskey he was mixing, he was drinking all different shorts. When he did get customers coming in, instead of keep buying them drinks, he'd wait till they bought him drinks. And he would take every drink that was available. It was as if he had closed his wallet completely at the point mid-low season, and his attitude started to change. Um, he was hardening up from when I first met him being the lovely soft fellow to turning into a bit of a scrooge with the business 
and a few little arguments started popping up between him and Jin. I did notice a difference. Customized bike. Oh, it was mad. Even had those LED lights and things all over it. Oh. We'll leave it there. I'll see you on the next episode. What's going to happen? Will it be what you're thinking? Maybe. See you soon. Take care.